truths are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great powers, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read in unison Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first letter of Peter. We declare to you that what was from the beginning what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may all so have fellowship with us. And truly, fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be made complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, 
as he himself is in the light, and we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. 
Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with him when Jesus, with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is called Low Sunday. I found two reasons for this title for the Sunday after Easter. First, it's supposed to be a bit of a letdown after Easter. That's not a very satisfying reason, and I don't quite buy into it. The other reason seems to be that some parishes find that attendance is lower on the second Sunday of Easter than on the previous Sunday, that is, on Easter Sunday. But since we don't call Easter Sunday High Sunday, I don't think we should call today Low Sunday. In any case, until I find a good reason for the name Low Sunday, I think I'm going to stick with the other name, and that is Thomas Sunday, because of today's gospel, which is read on all three years of the lectionary cycle. Since today is Thomas Sunday, I'm reminded of a poet, R.S. Thomas. R.S. Thomas is an Anglican priest of the Church of Wales and a poet of some considerable renown. He spent his ministry in the poorest and smallest of rural parishes, and many of his poems are about the spiritual life of the people of those villages and mountains. This is what always frightens my wife when I depart from what I've written down here. Thomas uh, had a reputation as a bit of a curmudgeon. Uh, he, he received a number of awards as a poet, and, but never gave interviews. And someone said she was going to get in to his house and interview him because she had the big check. And so she knocked at the door in this little rectory, in this little village, and he came to the door, and he took the envelope, and he said thank you and closed the door, and that was it. <laughs> his first wife died after many, many years, and someone said, he must have been very, very lonely. And he said, well, I was lonely before she died. <laughs> That's the kind of fellow Thomas could be. But he also was a remarkable poet. One of his poems caught my attention a number of years ago. It's called Folktale. And it recalls the story of Rapunzel and her long hair. Thomas wrote, Prayers like gravel flung at the sky's window, hoping to attract the loved one's attention. Prayers like gravel, flung at the sky's window, hoping to attract the loved one's attention. But without visible plates to let down for the believer to climb up, to what purpose open that far casement? I would have refrained long since, but that peering once through my locked fingers, I thought that I detected the movement of a curtain. Thomas was a priest until his death in the year 2000, and he speaks for many modern men and women who find themselves in the place of Thomas the Apostle during the first week after Easter. 
Thomas, brothers and sisters, have told him that they have seen the Lord, and Thomas can only say, unless I see, I will not believe. To simply call Thomas doubting misses what I think is the example of his integrity. In chapter 11 of John's Gospel, the disciples are convinced that if Jesus goes to Jerusalem, he'll be killed. And they have a great controversy about what they should do. Thomas brings the discussion to the end by saying, let us also go that we may die with him. In Christian legend and lore, backed with just enough fact to make it interesting, Thomas is reputed to have preached as far away as India. Thomas strikes me as an essentially honest person who, like the narrator of R.S. Thomas' poem, wants to see behind the curtain. One of my primary concerns for a long time has been the reality of Jesus' presence in our lives. I don't mean the memory of Jesus, and I don't mean a feeling that he is here or some sort of sense that he lives on in me or in my life. I mean the reality. I mean what's often called the real presence. In this morning's gospel, Thomas, when he arrives and the others are gathered, they don't say, we remembered the Lord so strongly, it was like he was here. None of them said that he or she felt as if Jesus was with them. They said, according to St. John, we have seen the Lord. And of course, Thomas speaks for many down through the centuries when he replies, unless I see, I will not believe. A week later, at what we might call the second Sunday service, today, Thomas was there. And so was Jesus, who said to Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. And, Jesus re and Thomas replies, again, for so many people through the centuries, my Lord and my God. Thomas' words, my Lord and my God, have been a prayer for many people at the Eucharist when the bread and wine are lifted up. They're a statement of belief for some and a prayer for stronger belief for others. They echo the words of the father of a sick child in Mark's Gospel in chapter 13. This man had asked Jesus to heal his child and Jesus spoke about the importance of belief. And the man blurted out, I believe, help my unbelief. The church understands that Jesus is among us as we gather around the Lord's table for the Lord's Supper. In one of the earliest mentions of this belief, St. Paul tells us that Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And Luke tells us the same things as do Matthew and Mark. Luke reminds us that this has been the understanding of the church from the very earliest days when he tells the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. When they sat down for supper and the stranger they had met on the road took bread, blessed, broke, and gave it to them, then their eyes were opened and they saw Jesus. And ever since then, it's been the experience of millions and millions of Christians that Jesus has been made known to them in the breaking of bread, as these two disciples said to the others when they hurried back to Jerusalem. We have Jesus' words reported to us by the evangelist and by Paul. We have the experience and the understanding of the church from the earliest times. And we, too, with confidence, can look at the Blessed Sacrament and say with Thomas, my Lord and my God. But that's not the only time we can do so. We can look at the church, the church through the centuries, the church gathered here this morning, or the groups of two or three which make up so much of the life of the church and parishes around the world. When I walked in this morning, there was a group of little more than two or three, but it was probably four or five sitting around the table, studying the Bible. We can be sure that where two or three are gathered together this morning in Fort Atkinson, Jesus was there with them. As he says, and as, our, as St. Matthew tells us, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. We also have the Great Commission, 
the conclusion of Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. When the church gathers, when the church does what it is called to do, then Jesus is there according to the evangelist, according to the experience of the church. It's hardly accidental that in both of the appearances in this morning's gospel reading, it's in the midst of the gathered church that Jesus appears. It's in the context of the gathered church that Thomas makes his confession, my Lord and my God. He has said that he will not believe unless he sees, and it's in the midst of the gathered church that he does see, and then he can seize upon belief as he sees Jesus. Besides the Eucharist and the gathered church doing what it's called to do, there's another time when we reach out a finger or a hand and touch the risen Lord. In chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel, we read about another time when Jesus is seen. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. There's another poem by a man named Thomas. In this case, it's Thomas Aquinas. And his poem is found in our hymnal, number 314. He wrote almost as a reply to the 20th century R.S. Thomas. Taste and touch and vision to discern thee fail. Faith that comes by hearing pierces through the veil. I believe whate'er the Son of God hath told, what the truth has spoken, that for truth I hold. Thomas Aquinas is writing about the Eucharist, but I think we can take his piercing through the veil and apply it not only to the appearance of bread and wine. I think we can pierce through the other veils, the other curtains and the windows of the tower to see through to reality. We can do so in the case of the gathered church in the midst of very ordinary people who find Christ in their midst. We can do so in the carrying out of the Great Commission and know that when we are doing evangelism, Jesus is with us, even to the ends of the earth in Jefferson County. And when we do something as simple as bring a soup can to the local food pantry, we are feeding our Lord. We find ourselves in what Jesus tells Thomas. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And still, having come to believe, we can also say to others, we have seen the Lord. And then, with blessed Thomas, we can say, my Lord and my God. In the name of that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. 
Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. And that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Whom shall we pray by name? Michael, Morgan. Heavenly Father, Pour down your Holy Spirit upon this parish and grant us a new vision of your glory, a new experience of your power, and new faithfulness to your word, a new consecration to your service that, through a renewed witness, your holy name may be glorified in your kingdom advanced through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and you humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
of the Lord. Kiddo. Peace. Peace of the Lord. the Lord. Not yet. Peace. Love you, dear. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Finally. Mother Mindy said this is the time for announcements, and are there any announcements? One more thing, as of last night, no baby yet.
And, and then also you'll see that the downspout saw out in the yard, while we had an unpleasant surprise when it was raining, we had a lot of flooding. And also while I was over here putting pipes on in an emergency measure to keep the water out of the basement, which actually worked, um, I found some other unpleasant surprises downstairs, so, or outside as far as the bed of the downspout. So, so if, if you want to talk to me about it, I'll come and talk to me at coffee hour about solutions for those things. Um, I have some ideas that we're just going to have to leave it at me. So please talk to me in a coffee hour. Thank you. Are there any birthdays? I had one on Monday. Monday. Would you like a prayer? Sure. Louise, would you hand me uh, the, the book on the chair? We are Episcopalians, so we have to do this by the book. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one you... Okay. Oh, Lord, our time's in your hands. What's your name? Will. Will. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Will as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Will. Yeah. Wedding anniversaries. Prayers for travelers. Prayer for Mother Mindy as she travels. Our son. Okay. Terry and Mindy, and I'd like you to pray for my son, Dean. He uh, works for the U.S. Antarctic program, hauling fuel to the South Pole. He's made two trips to the South Pole. He was supposed to leave McMurdo Base two weeks ago, but he's been stuck there for two weeks because of weather, and he thinks there's a plane coming today. So, for Terry, for Mindy, for Dean as they travel and pass through God's wonderful creation. We pray that God's blessing pours down upon them, upon all the people among whom they travel, and among all those who wait for their safe arrival here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Finally, I'd like to say what a great, great pleasure it is to be here. Uh, I grew up in Janesville. I went to school in Oshkosh. And Fort Atkinson was a place that was still quite a ways to go to Oshkosh, still quite a ways to get back to Janesville. And it's really nice to find what pleasant people there are here in Fort Atkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. So thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
るかと思います。Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of the Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as the faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Through him, he and you, the Lord of the Holy Spirit, be in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us to make us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and adored thee, Jesus Christ, crown of throne of glory, and the most holy sacrament of the altar, and the hearts of his faithful people. May all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Believe you are just a miracle. It was a bumpy road.